LeBron. Hey, yeah. what's going on, LeBron? Welcome to the show. How you doing? How 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 did you feel when we first initially invited you onto the show? Honestly, I was like, "What? Me invited to a podcast? I mean, I'm pretty known some areas. I know a lot of people know me sometimes. Um, but when these messaged me, I was like, "What? I'm like, I was, I was excited, but I was I was nervous at the same time because I mean, I love to talk. I could talk. I love right. it." That's cool. So whenever you talk to people, I mean, it, do you feel yourself like how, how do you feel yourself communicating with people like, uh, I don't know, like some people could just be uplifting, could be like negative, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, how do you find yourself talking to people? I feel like when I talk to people, I'm very understandable. Like I can understand a lot of people's situations um, and I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm an uplifting person. I'm very optimistic, super optimistic. I mean, that's just my background as a Christian and whatnot. Um, I was always told at three years old, that was a, a old soul. So mm. ever since then I've been talking, I was never like this. I was, I was a shy kid in school. No one like, I don't talk or whatever. But then when I got a job at, I want to say 14 or 15. And then when I got my first job, I was working at Best Western and my boss was like, you need to start talking. I was like, I don't know if I can do wow. that. And then ever since then, I love it. I love it. That's cool. That's cool, man. It's like your last name <laughs> speaks for itself. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I know my yeah, last so you yeah, yeah no one wrong. Is because that's my last name. I look at my ID, it's there. It's on my birth certificate. That's my last name. <laughs> that's cool, man. I like it. Awesome, man. So you're um uh, so wow, you were born and raised in Louisiana, New Orleans? Yes. Yes, I was. That's, and so you moved over here um uh, uh as a response to Katrina. Yes. Uh 05 uh oh. Katrina happened, so we witnessed the whole thing. I remember remember like yesterday. Um right. I wanna say like the day before Katrina, my mom was like, There's no school tomorrow. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. There's no school. I mean, I'm only eight years old. I'm like, okay, hmm. there's no school, whatever. And yeah. um, so the following day, we had my cousins and my cousins of eight. They stood at night, and their mom, they came and stayed at night. And then my mom, she was, she was a single parent at the time. And then she had me. I was eight. And then my sister was, I want to say, um, she was five. And then my younger sister was uh, two, two years old. She just turned two. And um, that day, I, I remember everything, seeing so much, going through that, and then trying to survive in the midst of, like, a hurricane and trying to survive where people don't want to, don't want you where they're at. Um, because a lot of people, they will, they will say, oh, no, you can't stay here because they have a two-story building. But it's like we live in a, a one-story apartment, and, like, how we gonna survive? Like literally, um, the war was at the roof of my house. Like it was, <laughs> it was bad. I seen it all, I witnessed it all, um, and then we was we was there for a while. Uh, they allowed us to stay for a night, and then the rescue boats that came to pick us up we were on the bridge, and all we had was what we could fit in the bag, and we had you no know, trash bags full of stuff we had you no know, bags of chips we had some sound stuff like that but that wasn't gonna last us that long we had a family it's a family of 13 and 14 people so we all try to survive and stay together and um the rescue boats had, and some of my cousins have shoes it's hot the next day after a hurricane all the time it happens everywhere um so it was like I want to say maybe 90, 95 degrees, maybe felt like 110. And mm. some of my cousins didn't have shoes and some of us don't have any clothes like that. And yeah. my my youngest sister and cousin, they just became potty trained. And then they have to relearn, like, they have to, like, you know, just use the rest of them on themselves. Oh. They just learn how to potty train. Um, so crazy, man. It's been it's been a lot. It's been a lot. But I mean, it's a blessing in disguise, so I don't really complain about it. Yeah, man, that's that's definitely hardship that a lot of us have not experienced. And just like to hear uh, your side of it, it, you know, even if at a young age you can remember those mm -hmm. types of things, you know, it's like it, it that has an impact on your life, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, would you say that that uh, that um, has helped you uh, to become the person you're becoming? Yes, I feel like they helped me. You know tremendously 
uh, because I feel like if that haven't, if that didn't happen, where would I would have been, who I would have been all out there. You know, it's a bad environment in New Orleans already, and you know, right. there's a lot of young young adults, young men who get you know hurt and stuff like that. So it's like, how how would I been if I stood and the hurricane never happened? I think about sometimes like. Would I be the same person I am? Like, would I be this, you know, genuine person who's honest, uplifting, motivational speaker, who likes to coach, who plays football? Like, would I be the same guy? So I, I think about it quite often, but I don't think I would have been the same if, you know, the hurricane didn't happen. So I'm kind of, I'm actually blessed that it happened. It's, I mean, things happen for a reason. That's my life motto, so. It definitely can be a blessing, like in disguise, if you don't notice it, man, for sure. That's awesome. So you mentioned football. You played football in high school. Yes, I played football at South Park when it was just South Park by itself. I played mm. uh, seventh grade year, then I went to GP eighth grade and ninth grade year. Played football there, and then I went to Moody, a Moody Moody, back to Corpus, and then I played at Moody for for the rest of my uh, high school career. I played some semi pro, but um, I I had quit multiple times because I mean you have to pay money to play. So I'm like I don't. I mean I'm just fresh out of high school. I can't pay. I can't pay anything. So <laughs> yeah, um, fresh out of high school, uh, um, going to uh, college and you know working minimum wage, and I'm like I can't pay for this stuff. Um, yeah. But I, I love it. I love playing it. I love it. It's just been a passion of mine. Yeah, for sure. I so I so I imagine you got into the way. I know you like weightlifting. Oh my gosh, I see some of your videos, bro. Yeah, yeah, dude. You, you, we're talking, guys. If you're not if you're not familiar, this guy has like five forty five pound plates on each side of the bar, <laughs> or four of them at least. I'm like, dude, how much weight is that, man? Uh, so well, well, the videos you're seeing, the recent ones, I want to say it's about four plates each side. So I mean, that's four hundred and five pounds. I squat. I try to, I don't know, a lot of people always come to me and ask me, like, uh, like how do you do that? I'm like, I honestly don't know. I just, I, I think I'm gifted at squats. I'm gifted at lifting weights. Because um, I, I remember my first year, my freshman year, I was, um, I had a friend of mine, he, he was like, you know, uh, uh, maybe a four-star recruit. And his dad was a, a referral player, and he was good back in the day. You know, state championship and stuff like that, and he trained me at the YMCA, one that where now I work, and he said, "Oh, we're going to start lifting weights." I was like, "Okay, cool." So, we we you know we started lifting weights. Whatever, I I start off with the bar, like everyone else. So I start with the bar, and then every like literally every session, like the weight just kept going up. So my first year of squatting towards the end of the year, I squatted three hundred pounds as a freshman. And then I remember my uh, my uh, sophomore year, I went to Moody, and then they had this record board on the on the wall, and it had the, uh, the squat record. It was like uh, 500, 550 pounds. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna beat that one day. And then no one, <laughs> believed me. no one believed. They're like, you can't do it. I'm like, I, I promise you, I can do it. I know I can. And then I know that year I got 485 pounds my sophomore year. And then my uh, junior year, I got 505 pounds. And then my mm. senior year, I was like, you know what? It's time to go to the record. So um, I bought the ma- I matched the record. I had the, the record matched on my on the, on the squat. And my coach was like, no, just get beat it, beat it. I was like, okay, all right. So I put additional uh, 2.5s on the side. So now it's 555. Mm-hmm. So I squatted 555. You know, I had a video of it. It's all the way down on my Instagram. But... Uh, I squat 555, and then later that year, we did max out again, and then I got 585 pounds. That's the most I ever squat, 585 pounds. So, I mean, yeah. I just love it. I mean, I don't know. Right, it's, yeah, no, that's awesome, bro. Dude, for sure. And you got to get, you have a good, you got to have a good form, too. You can hurt yourself for sure, mm-hmm. especially at that amount of weight. And, uh, yeah, that's cool. So, so what's your frame? Like, are you, how tall are you? I'm I'm really short. <laughs> I'm really oh, short. Okay. Everyone, everyone, uh, like everyone, uh, says you post pictures like you're tall, but I'm not. I'm like five two. <laughs> so I'm like okay. I'm like five two. Um, so I'm pretty a pretty short guy. Um, I was never. I I think I wasn't built like the way I am now. 
I wasn't built the way I am because in high school, I was a I was a you know lineman. You know, you no, know, I played you know uh, varsity at my senior year. Started all my games my senior year as a lineman, and um, so doing that, I would uh, I I want to say I was like about almost two hundred and fifty pounds at five two you no know, frame. I was just a big dude, and then. My senior year, I was like, it's time to lose weight or whatever. I got down from 250 all the way to 185 pounds. But okay. then, of course, since I got you know, a fiancé, girlfriend, that's when the happy weight came on. I'm like, dang, it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you still, so even though that happened, you were still maintaining, you were still lifting weights. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's Yeah, so you could still be, you could still be kind of, kind of big, but still have a lot, you know, a lot of yeah. strength. Yes, yes. I mean, That's a, lot awesome, people, bro. a lot of people look at me now. I mean, I don't seem that I'm, I'm not that big. Uh, I don't feel like I'm like fat or whatever. It's just mm. that if it, it just filled up like, you know, very proportional all over. So, I mean, nice. good. I like it. I mean, it doesn't bother me. So, so it's not just squats too. You're benching a lot too, bro. Honestly, bench that. I'm not <laughs> I'm not good at that one. Um, that that literally took years to get to where to where i'm at right now because um yeah. i want to say i was benching maybe a 25 on the side i wasn't able to bench a plate until i want to say my senior year and wow. then i was um i just worked hard at it. i just kept putting the work in every single day and just try to mm -hmm. you know become stronger progressively and that's why i'm able to bench you know where i can now because it's just a lot of work that's what something yeah. uh, people avoid is work you just you can't expect something and then don't put the work in so yeah i love that i love that about your videos man like you're just like look dude, if you want this you have to do this to mm -hmm. get it mm -hmm. like it's like you could there's sacrifice that occurs uh for that to happen so i mean uh so can you speak on that a little bit like i mean why do you think that how, how did you come to that conclusion like look if, if you need if you want this you have to do this mm -hmm. um honestly I don't know. I feel like I feel like sometimes I speak for myself. I don't right. speak for everybody. When I do those type of videos, I don't speak. I I don't talk to the people who I'm doing the video for. I'm talking to myself sometimes. So sometimes I catch myself in the in the run. I go look at my own videos and I'm like, mm. hey, you know. But it's always for me. But honestly, I feel like when I speak about those things, um, I try to reach people as much as I can. Um, it's just that because of my experiences in my life that overcome and that how, um, what I've seen and done and what, you know, seeing the sacrifices that my mom had made, taking the leap of faith and doing the work that she has now, now she has a successful uh, daycare business of her own. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's just, I, I, it's just all life experiences. That's all it is. That's why I am passionate about, you know, trying to make sure that people, you know, put the work in. In, in regards to anything that they want anybody can achieve it it's just that you just have to just do everything everything it takes mm -hmm. yeah and if you really want something you gotta you gotta definitely work at it totally man uh, you had to post something uh, i think it was um excuse me it was about like finances or something something about uh I don't know paying off or something or other but i've cut we're kind of on the same lines too my wife and i we don't mm -hmm. like debt or so Mm -hmm. Is there any advice that you have on that? Are you working on toward some kind of uh, like financial plan or something? Um, so right now, I mean, I'm young and I um, I was uh, approached by a guy um, during my coaching when I was coaching. Um, he, he his name is Rick Rick Moline. He's uh, the people's barber or whatever, and he's very well known. He's you no know, um, wall uh professional and he's very big on finances he's been you know teaching me about that and my parents been great help you know with finances and mm -hmm. it just a goal the goal of mine is to uh to not struggle as much as my parents have my mom had there before um oh. because we never had we was never made of money you know we was like you know lower class or whatever um but we made everything work because it wasn't i'm not saying it wasn't poor it's just that we didn't we wasn't able to get everything that you know everyone had um but is that it's just something about me that i just want to have that security in my life 
and to be able to not worry about oh i gotta pay this bill oh i gotta do this i i just do it you know so that's the that's my plan with you no know, finances is to honestly to not worry about money and to be able to get things what i want whenever i want and we're not worried about the repercussions of like oh man i i get this and now i can't get this i can't pay this bill i don't want to worry about that you know um but i mean my advice to people with finances honestly um with that i mean everyone has a story everyone has a different size of opinion a very you know Mm -hmm. understandable guy like anybody can have a difference of opinion um a very open-minded person it's just that with finances i mean what's important to you it, it all comes down to priorities uh what what you prioritize like do you prioritize you know your monthly subscription over um your bills do you prioritize you know um uh going to to uh take get drinks at the bar with your friends then you know getting groceries for your house it's like what you prioritize that's that's all it comes down to just uh, get your priorities set straight, and then maybe, or more than likely, you become you know, financially free over time as, as long as you keep uh, doing that uh, priority straight and stuff like that. That's interesting. It's it's almost like the decisions you make now now will have an effect on your future financially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah. So, do you think that like owning a house is part of like financial? Uh, I guess, uh, like legacy, I guess you could say, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. what do you, what do you, do you, what, what's the importance of owning a house to you? Um, the importance of owning a house to me, honestly, despite my, you know, my dreams and goals, or whatever, I feel like owning a house is great for, I mean, for an average person who's willing to stay wherever they're at for maybe more than 10 years. But, right. but my right. dreams and goals and desires are on coaching, you know, collegiate professional level i don't see myself mm-hmm. owning the house for a long time and i yeah, make yeah. sure i stress that i stress that to my fiance i'm like i don't know if we could get a house pretty soon we're gonna be moving a lot and I, mm-hmm. I have to like you know we prepare for it um it's just that's just i i have a tremendous amount of faith that i will make it far i know i will i'm not trying mm-hmm. to be like a cocky person i'm very confident in my abilities that god given me and I mean, he will not give me a goal and a dream that I cannot mm-hmm. achieve. So that's why I'm very confident that I can do it. Awesome, man. Yeah. So, so like, so you're kind of you're kind of young. It's like like a lot of people are pressuring pressuring you into doing like doing that because it seems like like as soon as you graduate graduate or whatever, you get a job or whatever. But everybody's mm-hmm. like, you need to get a house. You need to get a house. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. you're kind of like. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of pressure sometimes for people, uh, especially like older people, like older coworkers and older friends. Um, they will they will pressure you to do things like, oh, go have a. You know, I mean, well nowadays people don't like to have kids. They say, oh, wait to have kids, wait to get married, wait to do this. It's like, why I need to wait? And I was like, hmm. if I'm happy where I'm at and I'm young, mm-hmm. I can be if I want to because I'm happy. Right. I'm happy with the person I'm with, but a lot of people say, oh, wait till you're 30 to have kids, wait till you do this, oh, go get a house, go have fun. I'm like, I'm, I'm having fun with the person who I love. <laughs> why, yeah, why? Man. Like, it makes no sense. It's just that people like to push their own personal beliefs and opinions on you. Um, I do, I wanna talk about this one thing that struck me kind of a wrong way because I proposed to my fiance and then when I came back to work, I want to say maybe two weeks after the Christmas break, I was working with the school district at the time. And mm-hmm. she was like, some lady came up to say, why you got, why you, why you propose? You're young. You go have fun. I'm like, I, <laughs> I, like, I don't know what they want. Like, it's that the, it, that's why it's like, I could care less about any other's opinion. Um, I mean, it's great to have other people's opinion to make your own decisions. But mm. I could care less about it, you know. It's like yeah, it's my life; it's not yours. I'm sorry yeah, you bro. went through a hard time, but I'm not, and I'm enjoying it. So don't change it for me because of your own personal experiences and your own mistakes. I know I'm not making mistakes. My mom will let me know. I mean, God will let me know. So it's like mm. I haven't got any uh, sign that I'm making the wrong mistake. Ever since then, my mom's been supportive. Ever since I turned 18, that mm. you know you can do anything you want as long as you put your mind to it so that's that's all 
I've been doing. Yeah, man. Good for you, bro. Good for you. Yeah. The, the naysayers are out there, bro, everywhere. Yeah. When I, when I, yeah, when I first got married, uh, shoot, man, probably, the, I don't know how, maybe like 10 years ago or something. Anyway, uh, my coworkers, dude, they were so negative. It was, it was insane. They were like, oh, you're going to get divorced. Like, like three or four guys would tell me that, dude, from work. And I'm just like, are you serious, bro? Mm-hmm. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. believe it, man. And, and I, I just saw how unhappy they were. And it's like, no, that's not me. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, um, like I have a friend, I have a friend of mine and he said, oh, once you get married, that's like, uh, that's the chain and link. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, why are you making it seem like when you get married, like you just locked down? Of course, like you with that person for the rest of your life. But it's like, I'm not locked down. I'm free still, even though I'm married. We're still right. having fun as a couple and stuff like that. And of course, there's going to be time and point where we're going to start trying for kids. And it's like, oh, once you have kids, that's it. You're done. I'm like, no, I'm not. I can take my kids where I want. Like, I could take my kids on the, the dreams and desires I have for my life as well. As, as mm-hmm. if I'm a, if I like to work out, I'll take my kids to work out with me. I'll take my kids out for a walk. I'll be more active with them. Or you know, he'll say, uh, my friend will say, like, oh, once you get old, you won't be able to lift all that weight and stuff like that. I'm like, well, that's not me. Like, yeah, I get it, it was that you used that point in your life as a younger person, mm-hmm. but you you laid off. You laid off of right. it. You, when you start working now at a certain point and you try to get back into it, of course you're gonna start to hurt. If you're doing mm-hmm. for a consistent time, I mean, I've been doing this since I was 14. And I'm 23, mm-hmm. so I've been 10 years of working out, lifting weights. I mean, of yes, course, sir. yeah, I know it will happen. You, there's going to be you no know, bumps or whatever. It's going mm-hmm. to happen. It's inevitable. But right. you just got to continue to keep working. You can't. This is a lifestyle thing. It's not something you do for a certain amount of time and then you stop. You know, right. so, I mean, people's opinions, they're going to they're gonna say stuff. People's gonna say things. You just can't control yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, yeah, and and like in my journey, I feel like it has it. It feel like okay. So my my single years, yes, I, I feel like I got to a certain level, and then when I got married, I feel like it took me to another level because mm-hmm. it required more of me, more responsibility, more sacrifice because it wasn't just about me. So I had to evolve and change as a person after being married, and I have. You know what I mean? I learned a lot of things about myself that I had to change. And then after getting married, after having kids, I feel like I went to another level, bro. Because I had two little I had two little human beings that I have to look after and provide for. So it's like it it I think that it helps uh, a person become more, better. Mm-hmm. I, I guess like the next stage in their life. You know what I mean? Because you can be single for so long and then the next stage is marriage, you know, because I, I believe in God, too. I believe God created an order, you know, get, get married, have kids. You know, that's that's the order. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and and I feel like nowadays orders, it's crazy. It's it's like mixed up. You know what I mean? Yeah. People, have, people have kids first and then they get married and then sometimes they get married twice. And it's just it's out of order. You know what I mean? And when there's a lot of people doing that there it's that's the advice that's out there and for people that are uh are kind of trying to live those biblical principles mm-hmm. it's like going against the grain almost you know exactly yeah uh, so yeah it's it more mad props to you bro just keep at it man it's awesome yeah, of course thanks yeah so you're working on your your kinesiology degree currently yeah, yeah so i'm still in school um i finished up my last two years at a m corpus uh in the fall uh, so I'm like right around the corner of graduating, uh, right around the corner. So, wow, uh, bro. But I mean, after I get my, you know, my bachelor's in kinesiology, um, I I do want to go back to school, get my master's, and get my doctorate for sure. It's just something I love. I love the study of the body, the yeah. church. I mean, I, that's just me. I just fall in love with it. Ever since you know high school, when I was losing weight, I just fell in love with. It. I did it all by myself. No one helped me. Right. Mom, the only person who helped me through anything is my mom. But other than that, no one helped me. I got advice to her. Just research, reading research papers, articles. I'm doing. You know, I'm watching uh, seminars. I'm watching uh, YouTube videos from high knowledge PhD experts and stuff like that. Yeah, so man. I would like to come to me for advice. I'm like, oh yeah, you can do this. You can do that. Um, but sometimes people do their own thing, but I just, it's just kinesiology to study the body, working on exercise and nutrition is a big passion of mine as well. 
Wow, man. And so it seems like you already you have a good foot in the door because you work for the YMCA. Yes, I am the sports director and the outreach director over here at the YMCA. Um, so I'm doing um, working with kids. Like I feel like ever since I graduated, I've been working with kids. So um, five, you know, it's gonna be six years working with the YMCA. So we've been wow. six years since I graduated, six years with the YMCA, and I've been working here as a, just a regular staff doing regular sports and I did front desk and I did child watch, I did maintenance. And then they hired me on as a director, sports director. So I, it's been, you know, going up ever since then. That's cool. You started, it's, you started at the front desk. That's amazing to me. Yes. And yeah. then child care and then maintenance. And then now you're, wow, that's awesome, bro. Yes. That's pretty cool, man. So, so you like working with the kids, huh? Yes. I love working with kids. I mean, kids. What do you are like about it? Oh, what I love about it, honestly, I love watching them grow up. Uh, that's that's the one thing I love to you know watch. Watch them grow up, and then some. Some of these kids, I mean, they have you no know, dads and moms, you know, healthy households, but they always come to me for anything, and that's what I love the most. And it's like I don't even, I don't know you like that, and you to come to me for advice mm. or for anything, and for you to entrust, instill your trust into me means a lot so mm. you no know, kids just always been a passion of mine i guess ever since i started uh you no know, little coaching little league football um so i just love the kids that's is all that's all it's for it's for the kids yeah yeah man <laughs> it is a cool influence to have like you, you t i mean just to be an influence on the kids and see them just light up you know because they're they're innocent bro they're like they're and it's like uh show them the, to show to be able to show them what you think believe is the right way it's like fulfilling mm -hmm. because they have their whole life ahead of them you know exactly. Um, exactly yeah so that's pretty cool man that's awesome so so you so you, man so you it seems like you're going to be working from all ages of people um uh, because you want to get to the collegiate level yes of course i mean it's it I, i'm not gonna say it's a long shot it's just i i think about it sometimes like hey i'm about to work with like adults you know but the yeah they have to listen to me and it's mm. like i'm being fired too it doesn't help so it's like really gotta look <laughs> out to the coach and have to look up to my players i mean right now i have to look up to these kids these kids are tall oh my god <laughs> y'all uh, but other than that yeah i i mean i mean there's people there's adults who come to me and I'm like you don't know how much you inspire me. I'm like, what? Like you, like you're a grown woman, grown man. You tell me I'm inspiring you. I'm only 23. I mean, mm. 20, you know, age from 18 to 23. People say that, and it's like, it just means a lot. It means a lot. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't try to. I mean, it's just I'm so I, I feel like I'm gifted. And that's a gift I have that I cannot control, and that's something I'm right. called to do. Yeah. So, are you a, a millennial? I think I am. Yeah, I think I'm in the millennial. Yeah, I'm 23. Yeah, I think I should be a millennial. Yeah. Yeah, I'm asking because <clears throat> there's a stereotype with millennials like, oh, they feel entitled. They're all like this. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. you're like not like that. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I know what you mean. I get that. I get that quite often. Um, I don't know. So many people nowadays, like my age, they just feel like they're entitled to get more money it's like um no you don't like you have to work for this like right you gotta start somewhere yeah. i mean it's just i guess it's the way i was raised and you know see my yeah. mom but she was a single parent um i mean i had my father in my life and then it didn't work for them both and then my mom was a single parent and have my stepdad but he's not my stepdad that's like my actual dad i love him a lot awesome, um bro. but I've just seen that and my mom instilling all this stuff into me and the way how she raised us as an independent woman and us to be independent. That's why I am the way I am. You have to mm. work for what you want, you know? Wow. So I don't know. It's just the way I was raised. Yeah. I was going to, I was thinking that too, because I feel like upbringing has a lot to do with how somebody turns out. Mm -hmm. uh, just because that's how you learn as a kid. You, I mean, if you learn like that as a kid, then you're going to be like that. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I don't know, like successful football players can have somebody in their life that was a successful football player, exactly. you know, or, or somebody that's an awesome mechanic, their mm -hmm. father could have been mechanic. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so exactly. I think that definitely has a, 
has a part to play in somebody's uh, uh, success, you know, as you know, through life, you know, and navigating through life. Exactly. It's awesome, man. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I'm just reading your profile here on the on MCA, and it's pretty cool. So you're. Um, I'm trying to think of some other stuff to say. Is there anything you want to share by any chance? Um, I do want to share that. I mean, I've been coaching, uh, you know, little league football ever since you know my brother joined. Um, mm -hmm. Coach was like, "Oh, we need a coach. We, I'm the only coach here." Then my mom's like, "Oh, this is your chance. Go ahead and do it." And I was like, "Oh, okay." And ever since then, it's been the rest of his history. I mean, um, all the years that I've been coaching, I went to Super Bowl. I think almost every year. Uh, maybe that's maybe one year I did not go to Super Bowl. I won two back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Um, I went undefeated for one season. Um, mm. I mean, that's just accolades, you know. I mean, I could care less about winning, and I could care less about Super Bowl and winning the Super Bowl or going to Nationals in Florida. I don't care about those things. Mm. The only thing I care about is these kids take whatever I taught them while I was coaching them, and they take it to their life, they take it at home, they take it to school, mm. they take it to work, and they, I mean, I always tell the parents, every time when I, when I start, you know, start coaching the year, I tell parents, like, if they misbehave at home, or they misbehave at school, let me know, I'll discipline them. If mm. they say, yeah, uh-huh, let me know, I'll discipline them. I don't believe, wow. in, yeah, uh-huh, I believe in yes, sir, uh, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, um, yes. That's like I that's I do believe in respect, and right. um, if they come, those, those, those kids don't learn something from me, I didn't do my job. As long as they learn something from me, and they can take it to the work, take it to where they're gonna work at, where they go to school at, or whatever they play at, I know I did my job. But if, if mm -hmm. that if that doesn't happen, then I didn't do what I was called to do. So uh, it's just something that I love, you know, making sure that kids have this because. I had that in my life. My mom taught me all of these things I'm teaching these kids. I had mm -hmm. father figures when I was uh, who played, uh, who coached football to be, you know, at South Park at uh, GP and Moody who instilled those things into me and who I look up as father figures and I have friends who I look up to and I have my dad now who I look up to who taught me these things. So now it's like I'm able to teach these kids things as these coaches have taught me at uh, at a later age than them. Because these kids started at six years old playing Little League football. And, mm -hmm. I mean, it's always good to let them know how much they're valued. And it's always good to let them know that they're going to make mistakes. They're going to do things wrong. Everything's not going to be perfect. If you tell mm -hmm. kids, oh, um, you got to be perfect every single time, that's all that kid's going to try to do. That kid mm -hmm. gonna try to be perfect, and then when he's trying to be perfect, and he messes up one thing, he's gonna feel defeated, feel miserable. Mm -hmm. Really remind mm -hmm. him it's okay to mess up. That kid's right. gonna be like, oh, it's fine. I I can mess up, but I just have to do better next time. So it's just football is like so passion and coaching it. It's uh, it's amazing. I love it. Yeah, it's like an you're it's like you're using it, you're you like it. You're using it as an avenue to teach kids more than just that mm -hmm. that's that's amazing uh, like life lessons and, and mm -hmm. i feel like I, I i've learned a lot of stuff in playing football too as far as like being able to persevere and knowing what my body can actually take you know uh, both mentally and physically mm -hmm. uh, and that's a great point where like te don't teach them to be perfect um just teach them to 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 continue to try because if you like, if you teach them to be perfect, then sometimes it'll break their spirit to where they'll they won't want to try anymore because they're afraid of failing. Exactly. You know what I mean? And we don't want that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, right? Failure, failure is part of life. It's 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 supposed to be there. You're going to fail. I mean, all my videos yes. on Instagram, I post. You're going to fail. Work hard. You know value your loved ones as while they're here it's because i've seen it in my life and i've seen it in other people's lives but you're going to fail it's going to happen you can't you can't not expect to fail i i mean i know i'm going to fail as a coach i know i'm going to fail as a co-worker i'm going to but it's what you do after that is right. how you become after that that's what dictates you um i, I want to say as a call i may mess it up i mean 
life is only 10% what happens to you, but 9% how you how you view it, and what you do with that 10%. Mm-hmm. So whatever you do with that 10%, because life, you can't control everything in your life. Mm-hmm. If you can't control whatever happens to your life, then that 90%, you mm-hmm. have to do whatever it takes, whatever it means to you to overcome it and mm-hmm. how to perceive your perspective is reality. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's like, I mean, there's two there's two different type of people. There's one person who will say, "Oh man, I failed my test. Um, mm-hmm. I'm mad, um, upset." And then another person who failed the test. Oh man, I failed. That means I need to study next time. I need mm-hmm. to learn next time. That's two different people. Which mm-hmm. person gonna make it more in life? The one who's uh, moping about that they failed, or the one who's okay that they failed, but they know they need to work harder? Mm-hmm. I, I believe the person who wants to work harder and to pass next time is going to be the person who'll be more successful in life. You cannot, yes, you can't be successful in life, but then yet be just you no know, drag and cry and I mean, shoot. Anybody can. Everybody has a sad story. It's, what you gonna do about it? Everybody has a sad story. You know, it's like I can say, Oh, I grew up while a dad. I can I, I'm gonna go ahead and do drugs and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do that. Mm. I don't care about my life. But then right. another part of me, oh I didn't grow up with a dad, but I'm gonna be that dad that that I didn't have to my kids. Right. And I'm gonna be that dad or that father figure to those kids who, who I coach because I didn't have that. It's mm. two different people. It's just how you choose to do it. A lot of people right. have story so it's, that's why that's why when people have a sad story i'm like well then what you gonna do about it, what mm. you gonna do about it? simple fact so yeah man yeah that's awesome it's a, and it's amazing to me how 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 as humans we're kind of wired to know that you know what i mean like uh I had a person on the podcast and she she had a problem with like addiction to pills and stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And she knew that she was using certain events in her life as a crutch to do those things. So it's amazing that she knew that at, and she was con- still continuing to do it, you know, mm-hmm. and as opposed to somebody that say like that, that, does, that doesn't do that, but they're aware, but they know they need to make the change and they make the change. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That it's a decision. Yeah, it's all decision. It's just what you decide. I mean, it's in the Bible. The Bible is it's 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 right there. It's all plain in sight. Mm-hmm. You God already died for you. He died for your sins. It's your decision if you want to believe mm-hmm. him or not. It's right. your decision. Everyone yeah. makes a decision. I mean, you can make the wrong decision, but you know that you didn't make the right decision. Mm-hmm. Like you know that, but you mm-hmm. you decided that. You can't blame others because you made the wrong decision. That's your yeah. self That's interesting. So, do do you read the Bible or? Uh, um, you just to be honest with you, I'm not a big avid Bible reader, but I mean, mm-hmm. I'll read like um, excerpts from it um, here mm-hmm. and there. I mean, I go to church pretty often on on Sundays. I go to church limited, um, but I mean, I try to stay my stay in the Word of the Bible. I need to do it more. I know I do. See, it's like I know I need to, but it's just not yeah, fun. but. Um, I, I like to read it. I mean, it gives me a, a lot of uh, a peace, sense of peace and comfort when I mm. do that. So, um, yeah. so, I mean, it happens like where I'm just overwhelmed. If I just just read the Bible, just like just breathe. I'm like a fool. Like, <laughs> yeah, know. definitely. Uh, I, I like uh, I read Proverbs more than anything inside that book. Uh, which I don't know, maybe I should read other pa- other parts of it, but Proverbs mm-hmm. is really packed uh, full of wisdom, life yeah. skills, life yeah. wisdom. I love that. I, I, can, I can say that I can probably say that I read from Proverbs at least like three times out of the week because, mm-hmm. you know, they have, they have 31 chapters, you know, yeah. whatever, and you read one, the like today's the seventh or whatever. I read the seventh chapter. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, that man, that I call it Jewish wisdom. That Jewish wisdom is mm-hmm. is good for life. You know what I mean? And so, mm-hmm. some people choose to follow it. Some people don't choose not to follow it. You know what I mean? Some people have negative uh, thoughts toward church and stuff like that. You know? And uh, do you ever get that? Do you ever get that from people? Like, because you say you go to church and stuff. Do, do people mm-hmm. ever like um, think that you're a certain way because you say that you go to church or whatever? No, I, I mean, I, to my knowledge, no, I don't think people, I don't think so. 
I know that um, I had a debate with one of one of my friends on Facebook. Um, she she's not a big believer, and mm -hmm. I just talked to her, and um, I'm like I said, I'm a very open minded person, so I could see both sides of the story, and mm -hmm. she was she went through so much in life, and she's like. How can God be real? And then all this happened. And then it's like, it's not God. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. A lot of people like to blame God when things happen bad, but it's like, God doesn't allow it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the devil works too. <laughs> the devil was an angel too. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, I don't know. I mean, Christianity, I mean, it's a big, I mean, a big part of my life for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but I was never, I, I never got saved until I was, I want to say, 13 13 mm -hmm. i got saved so i mean I, I mean since then i mean that chunk 13 and, and younger i mean i didn't know i didn't i mean i knew there was a god but i wasn't very heavily involved mm -hmm. i mean i still went to church on sundays and stuff like that but 13 that's when i was like oh okay this is real I so really what do you, yeah what is that so what is what does that mean saved um so saved all right so basically you have to confess with your mouth and believe with your heart that 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 jesus died on the cross for your sins and you would get the ticket to heaven that's the point of being saved um so um i mean i go to church limits so they try to take as many people to heaven as they can before they die period so yeah. that's 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 our the church model um that's their presence that's their calling to do try to take as many people to heaven it's really not hard to get saved but a lot of people don't like to do it because they don't believe in it and they just feel like it's too good to be true but it's mm -hmm. pretty it, it that is true it's in the bible it says in the bible just confess right. your mouth believe with your heart and you'll be saved right that's interesting bro yeah uh yeah uh so people may think like well, well be saved from what you know what i mean they may have mm -hmm. questions like well, I mean, what's what's wrong with me? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then and then when 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 we're approached with that, it's like uh, there's nothing wrong with me. You know what I mean? Some people could yeah. be kind of like 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 I guess arrogant and think they can do no wrong. Mm -hmm. And when they see that 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 they have to accept Jesus or God, you know, then it's like no, for what? You know what I mean? So anyway, it's mm -hmm. pretty cool that you're talking about that on, on the open. Yeah, of uh, course. Yeah, man, that's awesome, bro. So so did you? So your mom? I guess your mom helped. Uh, Kind of guide you guided you in that way she was was she like a a, a christian yeah my mom's a christian she's a heavy christian oh yeah <laughs> my mom i mean my mom was a praying mom my grandma mm -hmm. i mean it all starts off with my grandma my grandma i mean she prays like if you want to like right we we go out of town pretty often and then we go see my family in new orleans yeah. my grandma prays every morning on her knees in the living room on the couch wow every, every day yeah. and it's my grandma prays for everybody, my grandchildren, everybody. Like right. that, I, we have a praying, praying family, and mm -hmm. my mom has that. She she's a praying mom. She prays every single day, no matter yeah. what the situation it may be. And then it just feeds on. It just bleeds everywhere, and it's, it's just it's very it's very uh, it's like a wildfire. It's gonna spread. It's a positive thing, which I like. I'm glad mm -hmm. my family is like that. Yeah, it's like, like it goes back to upbringing, man. Like your grandparents were like that. Your mom learned that from them, and you learned that from her, you know. And mm -hmm. it's almost like it's almost like the the way they lived was like biblically sound or base, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and when that is kind of like an under root, it seems like that people will, for the most part, grow up, you know, good, you know, successful, like have have morals and and ethics, you know, to them. Mm -hmm. uh uh so that that's pretty cool man so your family is so your grandparents are from new orleans are their parents from new orleans yeah everybody's uh, my whole family is based in new orleans wow well, bro that's I'm awesome everywhere. yeah so we're yeah all from new orleans. we went so i went to i visited new orleans uh probably like two years ago mm -hmm. uh man awesome culture it's crazy. I saw the levees. We got on one of the steamboats and I saw the mm -hmm. levee and the town underneath that is so crazy dude mm -hmm. uh and then we saw the um like the power when we went on that that road right there where they had those i don't know what you call them uh but anyway that that culture was actually there so long ago it's so to think mm -hmm. about that and to have like maybe your probably possibly your ancestors that were involved in that mm -hmm. and you know it makes me think about like how much they uh 
you know, believed in God and the Bible and all that stuff at that time, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Do you ever do you ever think about that stuff? I think about it. I'm like, I wonder who my ancestors are. Like, are they French people or you know, mm. Aryan? Where they're from? How they originate? Like, why are we here? Like, it's yeah. just I think about that sometimes too. It's like, who is started from? Who's the mm. who's the person who started yeah. this ancestors thing? Yes. Wherever we were based at. Um. So I don't know. It's, yeah, I think about it a lot. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it gives me a deep thought sometimes. Yeah, it's almost it's and then you go back and then you have to trace it back to the Bible because because the Bible's true, right? And you have to trace it back all the way to Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then uh, I guess nations got separated and they just kind of filled the land. And I don't know, man. I could talk about God and all that stuff for a long time. <laughs> yeah, too, I <laughs> pretty it. cool. Well, I, if there, I mean, is there anything else you want to share? Uh, fitness. Um, I mean, um, other than that, I mean. Uh, there's really nothing much I can share because I feel like I share quite a bit. Um, I don't yeah. mind uh, sharing awesome. more. I don't mind sharing. Um, but um, other than that, I mean, as long as you want to, anybody, whoever, you know, listening to this or watching this, want to achieve something, you have to, you have to work for it. And you're mm -hmm. taking this from a 23 year old who, and you probably ordered it me and you're like, why am I listening to this person? And mm -hmm. it's like, I mean, anybody can say that. I mean, right. I feel like God speaks to me to you to anybody, some majority of the time of my life, and sometimes you just you just have to just go with it, and um, so I feel like you know God's a big part of my life, my mom's a big part of it, and my dad is, they made me who I am, and so for me to instill that into you that you can do anything you want as long as you set your mind to it and work at it. You can achieve anything possible. No weapon form, no weapon form against you should be used on you with the with the power of God that He has for your life. As long as you believe in that, and I mean, if you want to be saved, you just have to confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, and you will be saved. And saved, all it means that you will have that ticket to heaven. You're saved by the grace of God, by the you know His the, the shed of His blood. For your life um so sorry if i'm all over the place but it's just that it's all good bro it's just it's just a part of my life that i make sure that everyone gets what they want mm. unless they want it and want to work for it yes sir that's good stuff excellent man we appreciate the advice that's oh, awesome man, no problem, man. yeah man uh well well i appreciate you coming on the show leron leron I right it. yes yes you said it right Everyone yeah. calls me coach. A lot of people call me coach. Speaks or coach speaks. Coach, yeah, um, cool. Everybody calls me all the time. My teachers will call me that in high school. Yeah. Oh, what's up, coach? I'm like, dang, I'm only in high school. <laughs> but, well, already, yeah. already calling you coach in high school. <laughs> yeah, they was already calling me coach in high school as a, uh, as a senior. So, I mean, everyone mm -hmm. calls me coach now. So amazing, bro. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We appreciate you having you on, man. And uh, yeah, thanks again. So, how, how do we find you online? Uh, so everything's basic. I'm very, very simple. I'm not those different hashtag type of guys. Uh, so my uh, Instagram is uh, the wrong speaks. My Facebook, the wrong speaks. Twitter, the wrong speaks. Um, you can follow me, message me if you need any advice or help. I'm like quick to res respond to anything. Um, if you're looking for a gym, come to YMCA, of course. Uh, great gym. We do offer financial assistance, uh, sign up for kids for our you know, youth programs and get your kids involved in, uh, you know, in their school, get them government, uh, work with them as well. So, uh, but that's about it. Yeah. Awesome, man. Okay. You guys check them out. I'll leave links in the description in the description. So, all right, Laurent, I'm going to say goodbye, man. You have a good day. You too. You be careful, man. I appreciate it. Oh, happy Mother's Day to mom. Thank you. Yes. I'll tell her. <laughs> okay. Bye. All right. Bye.